just want to start by saying how grateful I am for everybody that's here today. I think it's just the, the, perfect, the perfect people that came. And I want to preface the talk by saying that hypnobirthing is something that can really benefit everybody. You don't have to be pregnant, you don't have to be a female mm -hmm. to get a lot of benefits from, from the philosophy of hypnobirthing. And so what is hypnobirthing? It is a childbirth preparation method that really helps women have their optimal birthing experience. It's not just about having a natural birth. Women that have an epidural, a C-section, any kind of intervention, they can still really benefit from hypnobirthing. And again, anybody in life, parents, men, can benefit from being more relaxed and being able to reduce stress. So the birthing culture in the United States right now is kind of in dire straits. And that is one reason why I feel like hypnobirthing is so important because there is a lot of fear around birth right now. Women hold much more anxiety than excitement about their birthing experience, and I really want to change that, because this should be a really transformative, beautiful experience for women. So where does this fear come from? Anytime we watch TV or a movie, what do you see? A woman is just screaming and she's yelling at her husband. And even though it can be kind of funny, it's still traumatic. And those are a lot of the images that drop down into our subconscious mind. Even if we feel like, well, I know that birthing's not like that. You know, it can be very peaceful, even though consciously we know that about birth. What happens is all of those images drop down and they're swimming around our subconscious mind and when we become pregnant, they manifest a lot of fear. And horror stories. Unfortunately, so many women love to tell other women about their <laughs> horrendous birthing experience and they mean well, they're just wanting to share and connect, but what happens is the birthing woman, the woman who's going to be giving birth, is, is terrified especially when it's someone that she loves and trusts that's sharing this really scary experience with her. And many women kind of wear it as a badge of honor. You know, like, I survived, I did it. And, you know, I absolutely respect that, but it's better to leave those stories until after the woman successfully gives birth. So what happens when the woman gets into all of that fear? What we call the fear tension pain syndrome, starts, and the idea is when you're feeling a lot of fear, you get really tense, and when you get really tense, pain is created, and when you're feeling pain, more fear is created. And so the woman gets stuck in the cycle, and anybody can get into the cycle. You know, I'm fearful, I'm tense, I'm feeling pain, more fear, and some women or some people live every day like this, stuck in that cycle. And what happens when we're in the fear, tension, pain cycle is we go into our sympathetic nervous system. And that's where the fight, flight, or freeze response comes in. And our blood is redirected to our defense organs. The uterus is not a defense organ. And so what happens when the woman is really freaked out, especially during birth, is her uterus, her baby, they're not getting enough oxygen. And so that can be a slippery slope to, to intervention. So where we want to go, we want to get out of the emergency room. That's what we call that sympathetic nervous system, where you're feeling really tense and fearful. If you're in the emergency room, we want to get to the healing room. We want to move the woman into the parasympathetic nervous system, where she's breathing and relaxing, expanding, opening, getting plenty of oxygen to herself, to her baby. And we do that with hypnobirthing. <laughs> uh, these are the five main pillars of hypnobirthing. Relaxation, breathing, affirmations, visualizations, and hypnosis. I'm just going to take us through the, the main ideas behind each principle. I could talk for 10 hours about all of this, but I'm going to keep it succinct. So with relaxation, we have three main methods that we use. And let me say that all of these techniques all meld together because relaxation is a product of really everything else on the board. So one of the tools that we use with relaxation is facial relaxation. 
because your face and the tension or relaxation in your face has a direct correlation to your pelvic region. So when you're like this and you're in pain and you're birthing, what happens? Your cervix, your uterus, everything just tightens up and pain is created. So what we do is we lead the woman through a practice to relax every little muscle in her face. And when we really do a scan of our face, we notice that there's probably some tension, especially in our jaw. And so I'm gonna lead us through at the end uh, an exercise to release all that tension, but even touching the face, you know, the birthing companion can just touch her face and as her face is being touched, she notices if there is any tension, especially around the eyes, like squinting or tensing the face, and we just wanna release that. All of my birthing <laughs> pictures, they're really boring, so I'm just kind of sitting there, and I look like I'm asleep. I was not asleep, I was very present. <laughs> but, but I found it really important to relax my face, because when I started to get like this, I would stop breathing, and I would get in that, that position that created a lot of pain. But when I could relax my face, everything else followed. Kissing. Kissing is something that partners can do during birth to help relax the pelvic region. And, you know, that adds so much more intimacy and love into the experience. The next tool that we use is what's called rapid relaxation. Because sometimes we don't have time to go through an entire progressive relaxation. The woman needs to be able to relax right now or any of us, if we're in the car and somebody swerves in front of us and our fight flight response comes up and adrenaline kicks in and we save ourselves, we need a way to relax after that and to flush out those catecholamines, the stressor hormones, the adrenaline. And so we have two different techniques that we use. One is called zone one through five, and it's really simple. You envision your body being separated into five zones, zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, and zone five. And you just take a deep breath and envision endorphins, your body's natural relaxants just easily flowing down as you count. So you just count down one, two, three, four, five. And just envision your body becoming a marionette, totally loose, totally relaxed. And the more you practice it, the quicker you can go. You can go one, two, three, four, five, and you're just, you're out. I've seen women do it. I've seen people just fall out of their chair. And it happens like that. You can also do from your feet up. Just one, two, three, four, five. If you're having insomnia, this can be really effective to help you fall asleep. It's kind of like the counting sheet thing. Just one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The next technique is called disappearing letters. And it's the same idea, you know, something really repetitive and peaceful. You're saying A, 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 B, 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 C, C, C. You're seeing the letters come towards you or just floating across your face and you're just allowing each pass to take you a little bit deeper and you might feel your body sinking deeper and deeper into your chair, into the bed, and that's one of my favorites. And the last main relaxation technique we use is called light touch massage. And light touch massage is um, just what it sounds like, a light touch massage. And the idea is to really lightly stimulate the nerve endings on the tips of the skin because a really deep massage can sometimes be really uncomfortable for a birthing woman, and it's really tiring for her birthing companion. <laughs> Having to rub somebody's shoulders for 12 hours um, can be a little bit taxing. So doing the light touch massage is very easy. You know, sitting on a birthing ball, the woman can lean forward and just totally float within as her birthing companion, her doula, helps her relax. And you can do this anywhere. You know, I use it actually if I have to go to the bathroom and I'm in the car and you need your attention to leave your bladder. You know, you can just kind of stroke your arm and all of my attention is going right here, just stroking your arm. It feels really good on the scalp, your neck, your arms. Um, but what I teach in my classes is we do it on the back. So a lot of birthing women have a lot of tension, a lot of discomfort in their lower back. So we start at the base of the spine and you just move up and up, down the arms, up the scalp, or you can do a swirling technique. And it's really nice. I've had moms and they just wanted that done the whole time. They didn't want anybody to talk to them. They just wanted their light touch massage. And it gives their partner something to do. Because so often the birthing companion, he doesn't know what to do. He's sitting there and the mom is just like this and he, he wants to contribute. He wants to help. So this is something that, that he or she can do. 
Okay, breathing. Breathing is so important. It's almost impossible to feel anxiety or pain or stress if you're breathing. We have three main breathing techniques. The first is called calm breathing. And this is a technique that you can use anytime. This is how I lead clients into hypnosis. And all it is is an inhale to four, exhaling to the count of six. And the numbers don't even matter that much. It's just about being mindful of your breath and focusing on breathing. Because so often we are in that emergency room where like this, and we might gasp a little bit to get some oxygen so we don't pass out, but we're not <sighs> taking really deep, powerful breaths. And this is the breathing during birthing that moms use in between surges to really float back into relaxation when they're not having to be really present in their body. Which leads me to the next technique, which is called surge breathing. And it's just what it sounds like. It's the breathing that you use during a surge, during a contraction. And it really facilitates the body rising up and surging. And so what the mom does is she does a quick count of 0 to 20, envisioning inflating a balloon in her stomach, just letting it go out, 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 out. It's kind of hard to get from 0 to 20. I usually do maybe 0 to 12, and you're counting really quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And when you reach capacity, then you do the same count exhaling. And again, the idea is to give the baby, the uterus, lots of space, lots of space during each surge. And most moms have to do more than one breath for a surge. Uh, most surges last more than a couple seconds. But it's very effective, and it gives the mom something to focus on. Because the surges, that's when she is birthing. That's when she is really feeling those sensations, feeling that energy moving through her. And when you don't have something really specific to focus on during that surge, sometimes moms get carried away in those sensations and they get freaked out, they get tense, and they're thrown into that fear, tension, pain. So it's almost impossible to go into the fear, tension, pain syndrome if you're breathing with the surge. And then after the surge, you just float back into the calm breathing. And then the last technique is called birth breathing or breathing love. And we really use this to replace a lot of the pushing that's done at the end of birth. Many moms at the very end, you just have this uncontrollable urge to push, and that's great. We want them to listen to their body and, and push when they want. But I know for myself, I pushed for about two hours. And it was really exhausting. And I think if I would have utilized the birth breathing more, it would have been a completely different experience. I think that that stage of my labor would have gone quicker. Because often when you're pushing, you're contracting, and you're not getting a lot of oxygen to your body and your baby. But when you're, breath when you're doing the birth breathing, you take in a and you're pushing that breath down the back of your throat, down and out down and out, and while you're doing the breath, you're visualizing your baby moving down and out in a really smooth, fluid motion. And a way to practice this is while you're having a bowel movement to see how effective it is. Because instead of going like this, you're breathing down. And that's how I recommend my moms practice it. You don't need to sit at home. But when you're going to the bathroom, try it. And when moms experience that while using the bathroom before their birth, they have more faith in it. They have more faith that they can actually do something. Because so often we think, okay, if I'm not putting in a lot of work, there's no way my baby's gonna come out. But when you feel how gentle it can be, but effective at the same time, moms remember that when they're going through transition, when their baby's emerging, they remember that they can just do the birth breath. And it's very similar to different types of uh, yoga breaths. So. <sighs> And you get out that energy, you know, instead of yelling at your partner, you can just do the birth breaths. <laughs> okay, affirmations. Affirmations are so powerful because our body is kind of like a robot that is controlled by our mind. And our mind is sending our body words and messages. And so when we're really mindful about the messages that our mind is sending our body, the body responds. Uh, one way that we do this before I get specific with the affirmations is by changing some of the words 
that we use around the birthing experience. So you might have noticed I'm not really saying contractions, I'm saying surges. Because when you think about contractions, you think about contracting. And we don't want to contract, we want to expand. We want to unfold. And so we use the word surging, which is somewhat more accurate for what your body's doing. It's surging up and pushing down. And you can think about waves. That was a visualization that I had during my birth. It's just big, powerful waves surging. And it wasn't some bright, beautiful visualization that I thought I would have. It was very dark, but it was powerful. Because I knew at the top of the wave, that would be the peak of the surge. And then I would move down, have a very short lull in between my own birth, and then move back up. <sighs> And that's all I saw the whole time, but it really helped me surge with each surge instead of contracting and being fearful. Pain is the other word that we try to eliminate from the birthing experience because when you're asked, how much pain are you in? Your mind asks your body that and your body says, I don't know, how much pain am I feeling? And often it responds with some level of pain. So instead we, we really label the sensations that the mom is having. Are you having tightness, pressure, heaviness? Because so often you do, you feel that tightness, that pressure, that lifting during a surge. So that's the verbiage that we try to use. Because when you think about pressure tightening, it becomes just that, pressure and tightening, but not pain. So those can be two really, really powerful words to change. So affirmations. Affirmations like, my cervix easily opens and unfolds my baby smoothly comes out into the world, repeating those messages over and over and over, manifest them. I've had moms that just listened to the affirmations for 20 hours straight. This is really powerful. They were sending their mind those powerful messages instead of that inner critic saying, this really hurts, this is awful, Let's, I don't wanna do this anymore, get me out of here. Which can be very powerful during birth and can really pull the mom out of that really centered, peaceful sanctuary within. But listening to those affirmations and listening to them well before birth really sets the mom up for a very, very peaceful, beautiful experience. And you can use this for any goal. Say you want more success in life. Before bed you can say, success comes to me as I sleep. Success easily comes to me as I sleep. When I'm on vacation, money is flowing in. <laughs> Anything you want. You know, and saying that over and over again can really manifest it again in your reality. Okay, visualizations. So, I was talking about the messages that we send down to our body affecting our world, but the images that we send down also have a real impact. So the three main visualizations that we use in hypnobirthing, one is the opening blossom. When you think about you know, time-lapse videos of flowers opening, they're not like struggling and they're not fighting and they're not in pain, they just open. They just do what they know how to do, it's natural. They just unfold, especially a rose, all the different layers just unfold. And so that is what the woman's birthing body can do. Her perineum, her cervix, everything can just unfold and open. And that's one of the techniques we use when a mom needs to naturally induce is, you know, getting in a tub, getting in warm water, and just envisioning her body opening as easily as a rose blossom. The next one is visualizing her optimal birth. And we usually do this through hypnosis. We get her really relaxed, and then we take her through each stage of her birth and have her envision what that looks like for her, what she wants that experience to be. And it's different for everybody. We all have different visions of what our optimal birthing experience will be, but when we take our mind through that and really be mindful of each stage and what that actually looks like, so often that becomes our experience or some aspect of that, at least the sensations and the emotions that are present during that optimal birthing experience happens for women. I know that was, that was my experience. And then rainbow relaxation. This is kind of the, the crux of the program as far as what the mom listens to. It's a guided relaxation, and in it, the mom floats through different colored beds of mist, if you will, almost like floating through clouds, and each color represents a different feeling. And so what I have moms do is choose their birthing color. For me, it was a turquoise mist, and I still use it. Anytime I'm feeling stressed or starting to get overwhelmed, just taking a deep breath and envisioning that turquoise mist just surrounding you. It's really protective. It takes you back within into that inner sanctuary. You might get a tingling sensation feeling that cool mist. It can be really powerful. 
All right, and hypnosis, my, my favorite part. Hypnosis is so incredibly powerful for birthing and for everybody. So hypnosis is not necessarily standing on stage and quacking like a duck or uh, running around like a chicken, which is how many people uh, think of hypnosis. And sure, that is an aspect of hypnosis. But how we use it in hypnobirthing and hypnotherapy is very different. Really all it is is a focused state of relaxation it's not mind control. I can't make you give me your bank account numbers. I can't make you go rob a bank for me. The only ideas that I can put in your mind are ideas that you want there, are images that you want there. The only behaviors that I can help you change are ones that you want to change. And with birthing, this is where we get in there. We dig into the subconscious mind and we replace all of those negative birthing images all those scary thoughts with something really positive, really beautiful images, behaviors, actions. So I'll use one of my photos. Okay, so the iceberg, this is a very popular image to describe the mind. So this top part right here is about 12% of the mind. This is our conscious mind. This is where we have our willpower, our critical thinking, our to-do list, that inner critic that's blah, 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 talking to us all the time. And then down here, this is our subconscious mind. It's about 88% of our mind. And this is where all of our inbuilt behaviors, thought processes, really deep-seated emotions about different things that we experience, that's where it all lives. And it's very difficult to consciously change our subconscious mind because there's this filter, this critical filter in between our conscious mind and our subconscious mind, and it decides what drops through. And oftentimes, that voice in the conscious mind says, no, nope, no, nope, throw that out. So what we do in hypnosis is we remove this filter, and so we can go down and again drop those really positive messages that have lasting impact. So a few nice examples of how you are in hypnosis every day. It is not an elusive state that only a few people can get into when you're waking up in the morning and you're not quite alert, but you're not fully asleep. That's hypnosis, that in-between stage. When you're falling asleep at night, you're not all the way asleep, but you're not fully alert, hypnosis. When you're driving home and you end up in your driveway and you don't remember the last five minutes, but you're home and you're safe, you're in hypnosis. Your conscious mind went over here and your subconscious mind came up and says, oh, I, I remember how to drive home, I can do this. Uh, if you're in the zone and you're doing something that you really love and three hours passes and it felt like 30 minutes, you are in hypnosis. So it's not the state that's really difficult to get into. We do it every day. And to go back to the body-mind connection, which is what hypnosis really works with, think about <clears throat> a soccer player. And he's five minutes away from winning the game, and he sprains his ankle. His mind, his subconscious mind, his conscious mind, it's saying we are totally focused on winning the game. So he doesn't even feel his ankle. His mind is saying, win the game. So with birthing, when your mind is so conditioned to birth your baby easily, your body responds and your body goes with it. And it's not feeling pain because it's conditioned to just be relaxed and flow with the experience. Another example of the mind-body connection, say you're nervous. That's all in the mind, but we have very real physical reactions. We start sweating, our face gets flushed, our mouth gets dry. And that's all the mind. So again, the mind can really have very powerful effects. OK, so I'm going to lead us through a short progressive relaxation, if everybody's comfortable with that. All right, so when you're ready, yeah, just getting comfortable. And you can continue to reposition throughout the, the entire relaxation, just allowing your eyes to close when you're ready. Focusing on your breath. Taking in three deep, powerful breaths, allowing each breath to take you deeper within, and you get to decide when you relax. It's your choice. It can be the first breath, the second, the fifth. Allow your body to choose when it wants to relax. 
And with each inhalation, you're breathing in peace, comfort, serenity. And with each exhalation, you're relieving, releasing all fear, worry, or tension. Any fears, any anxieties, any doubts, you release them as you exhale. You don't need them anymore. You don't want them anymore. Just let them all go. Let them all flow out. Very good. Very good. And if at any moment you notice any tension that you're holding in your body or your mind, direct your breath to that tension. And as soon as your breath reaches it, it dissolves. It's gone. Very good. And now I want you to notice a slight tingling at the very top of your head. These are your endorphins, your body's natural relaxants starting to stir at the top of your head. And now they're slowly flowing down, down over your forehead, releasing any and all tension. Any worry lines in your forehead are smoothing out as the endorphins, the relaxation flows down and through. And now it's reaching your eyes flowing through your eyeballs, all the little muscles in and around your eyes. They're releasing, they're relaxing, they're letting go. Very good. Endorphins now traveling down through your cheekbones, flowing down into your jaw, allowing all tension from your jaw to melt down and out, down and out. And now your face is totally limp, completely relaxed, fully at peace. If your mouth feels like opening a bit, allow it, let it, relax it. Relaxation now flowing down through your neck and your throat, releasing any tension in your vocal cords flowing down now into your shoulders, allowing your shoulders to droop effortlessly into the frame of your body, sinking down. Moving down now, swirling in your upper arms, around your elbows, through your lower arms, into your hands now. And as the relaxation reaches the tips of your fingers, you might notice a slight tingling sensation and allow that to take you even deeper. Very good. Relaxation now flowing down through your chest. You might notice a warm, relaxing sensation in your heart, allowing your heart to expand, releasing love to yourself and everyone around you. Very good. Relaxation now flowing down into the stomach. We usually hold so much of our tension, so much of our stress in our stomach. Allow this relaxation, allow your endorphins to move through that tension, to allow it to dissipate, to remove itself from your body. Very good. Relaxation now moving down through your thighs, into your knees, down through your calves. Very nice, flowing into your heels. Yes, down into the tips of your toes. Very good. And as this relaxation reaches the tips of your toes, you might again notice that slight tingling sensation. And now allowing your body to just sink into the chair below, your body heavy with relaxation. And you might notice a slight buzzing in your body, the buzz of relaxation. Take a moment to feel that now. Be in that space. Very good. Going deeper, letting go, releasing and relaxing. Very good. And now that you're here buzzing in this space of relaxation, you become aware that you're open to inviting in your best self, and your best life. 
And if you're pregnant, you're inviting in your optimal birth now. That is becoming part of your reality right now. Your best self, your best life, and your optimal birth. Be there now. Feel how good that feels. Feel how wonderful it is to be free of your stress, your worry, your tension. And if that inner voice, that inner critic, comes up while you're feeling these sensations, allow the messages that this inner critic is giving you to be like clouds floating out in front of you. You can observe them. You can see them, but you don't need to absorb them. You have wonderful perspective. See those clouds now, those thoughts, just passing in front of you, passing by. And if there's any dark ones, you can transform them into gold just like that. Transform them and allow them to continue to pass by. And at any time during your day, you can do this with your thoughts, with that inner voice. You can remove it. You don't need to silence it, but you can remove yourself from it. And it can just be that passing cloud. Oh, very good. Taking a moment to be in this space, taking in another deep, wonderful breath. Very good. And now I'm slowly going to bring us back to our current surroundings. I'm going to count you up from zero to five. At zero, you drop a bit deeper into relaxation, reaffirming every message that you've just been given. At one, taking in a deep, revitalizing breath. At two, noticing now that you feel wonderful in every way. Three, beginning to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Four, smiling with the knowledge that you are now your best self, living in your best life. And five, when you're ready, eyes open, wide awake. One, two, three, four, five, eyes open, wide awake. And you can just take a moment if you need to to come back. And then if anybody has any questions. Most moms start around the end of their second trimester, the beginning of their third. But, you know, I've had moms start when they're two weeks pregnant because they wanted more time to practice and they really had a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear and they felt like they had a lot of stuff that they wanted to work through. And so they start at the beginning and that really served them. So I think it really depends on the mother. Again, the Hypnobirthing Institute usually says, you know, definitely by the beginning of your third trimester because the series is five two and a half hour classes. And so we usually want about a week in between each class for all the information to really integrate and for the mom to practice it so she can bring any questions that she has to the next class. But again, you can start at the very beginning and still have the benefits as long as you continue to practice. I think that sometimes, you know, they say start the begin or start the classes in the third trimester to make sure it's fresh in your mind. But, you know, I my own experience was that all of these tools are almost addictive. You know, once you start to get the positive benefits, you just want to do more and more of them. So when you get on a roll, you continue to do them throughout your pregnancy, throughout your birth, and the rest of your life, really. So these classes can, can serve you at any time. One thing that I, a question that I had in my mind that I'm answering now, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, how can you use this if you're going to have a plan C-section? You know, because you're not necessarily going through the stages of birth. You never even really have surges. And you're going through a surgery. That can be really scary. And that's really daunting for a lot of moms. And they're afraid that they're not going to bond as much with their child, that breastfeeding might be difficult. They still have a lot of fears leading up to the birth of their baby because they're still birthing their baby. It doesn't matter how it's happening. They're still having their beautiful, happy baby being born. So we use all of the same techniques 
And even throughout the, the operation, oftentimes I have them, you know, listen to one of their relaxation recordings. I give them a lot of really specific fear release that they do before. And often those mothers have quicker recoveries, they're able to breastfeed quicker, and they have a really beautiful postpartum experience. So again, I mean, this can serve any type of birth. It doesn't have to be a natural birth. I just, uh, the thought that just came up, in my previous labor, uh -huh. uh, all I wanted to do was move yeah. and dance. Yeah. Like, what, any, mm -hmm. like any time I felt mm -hmm. like a surge coming through, I was like, yeah. I just wanted to move. Mm -hmm. And um, with this, it like, I mean, can you, it seems like, is it, can you use these techniques in, as you're moving, or is it more like do you need to be sedentary in order to get the benefits of mm -hmm. that? Or? And every woman experiences it differently. Um, for I thought that I would want to move a lot in my own experience, but I just sat like this <laughs> the whole time. I was like, I don't want to move. I don't want to go to the bathroom. I just want to sit here. Um, but I've had so many moms that that they just instantly start to do kind of like a belly dancer <laughs> movements. Yeah, the like swirling of the hips. And it's so natural to have that swirl. I mean, think about the, the earth rotating. I mean, that's such an organic pattern of the earth, and especially for birth. And I had one mom, and she felt you know a lot of energy coming down and through her. And she felt like the only way that she could move through it was by swirling her hips. And, and birthing balls are really wonderful for this because they really facilitate that easy motion. And yeah, movement can be so wonderful. You know, walking, doing the, the dancing, and it helps to distract you. You know, when you're focused on moving your body and moving that energy through you, it really facilitates getting through the surge and, and through the emergence of your baby. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>Everybody has a different way that they go into hypnosis. Some people feel like they're very conscious and that their mind keeps going over here and over there and they're very alert. But in that case, the, the subconscious mind is listening, so it doesn't matter what you're thinking about. You're still in hypnosis. When you feel like you're falling asleep, you're actually at a stage that's a little bit deeper than sleep. And that's definitely a deep state of hypnosis. And it's interesting because even when people say, oh, well, I fell asleep, I was able to bring them out of hypnosis. And if you think about when you're really in a deep sleep, if somebody's talking to you, you, you do not hear them. Like they would have to be really loud or jarring to get you back up. But with hypnosis, people tend to go in, in these waves. You know, they hear my voice and they're aware and then they kind of drop down and they don't remember what I said and they come back up. But they do that on their own. I'm not necessarily bringing them back up out of sleep. Their body is just following that natural pattern. So you're still being hypnotized and, and you can still benefit even if you're not consciously aware of the words I'm saying. Because again, we're not really concerned with your conscious mind during hypnosis. We wanna get down into your subconscious mind. So sometimes it's even helpful with some people when they're thinking about what they're doing for dinner or their to-do list because they're not analyzing all of the messages that I'm giving them. So their conscious mind isn't saying, mm, I don't believe that, I don't think that's going to work for me, this and that. You know, it's, it's over somewhere else, thinking about dinner. But the subconscious mind is saying, yeah, tell me more, give me more. And, and with imagery, I didn't use as much imagery with the short progressive relaxation that we, we did, but sometimes I use a lot of imagery. And I'm talking about, you know, you're walking in a field and you're seeing this and that. Some people see that, like an image, like a movie in their mind. But a lot of people just sense it, and they just feel it. They're not, they're not seeing something, but they feel where they are. So we have so many different senses and so many different ways to experience hypnosis. And for birthing, that's so true. You know, some women, um, like smelling lavender, using aromatherapy is really powerful for them because that sense is what really speaks to them. And so using that aromatherapy puts them into hypnosis, and they go really deep. For some women, they're very visual, you know, so usually using visualization or having, you know, some actual token that really heals them helps. For some, you know, hearing that music, hearing the voice of their partner is really helpful. For some, it's touch, that light, that light touch, um, having pressure points hit on their lower back. So that's one of the beautiful things about hypnobirthing. And I told you, Rebecca, at the beginning, I'm going to give you so many tools during the class series 
but there's going to be a few that intuitively you feel like, okay, these really work for me, and that's what I'm going to use. So it really can help any woman, no matter you know, how you process emotions and sensations. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> I had a question that is not necessarily exactly related to the birthing, but um, I really listened to what you said about the relaxation, breathing, affirming, mm -hmm. and I was thinking of other clinical situations where it could be very helpful. Mm -hmm. And the obvious one is smoking cessation. Mm. And I didn't know if that was something that you do. Yeah. Um, and the other one is even dealing with PTSD, whether it's about driving to LA or mm -hmm. um, any other of those anxiety producing states that people have because of an experience they've had in the past. Mm -hmm. And I thought this could be very relevant. I just didn't know if that's something that you do. I do, I do. And it's incredibly effective for everything that you mentioned. With smoking cessation, there are incredible success rates with hypnosis. And we have a very specific formula that we use for smoking cessation more so than any other you know issues that people come to hypnotherapy for and it's incredibly effective it's usually about a six to eight week program I mean of course there's no set prescription for anybody with that I shouldn't say prescription but but set method you know some people take three sessions some people take 12 but it's very very effective because so often smoking it's not really the the physical addiction but it's the the habit the the feelings that we associate with it so we can definitely go in with hypnotherapy and say, okay, now when you do a deep breathing or now when you go on a walk, you're going to get those same benefits that you get from smoking a cigarette. I have clients that I'm working with right now that experienced um, a robbery of their home and it was very traumatic and it has been so healing for them to use hypnosis to feel safe again in their home and to relieve that, that trauma, you know, that, that very traumatic experience. And one way in this particular example that we do that is by using imagery to see their home in a new light, because right now they see their home as an unsafe place that was tainted by unwanted visitors. Um, you know, so we use imagery to go through the home and just see it, you know, glowing with positive energy, with safety, and it's so powerful, especially for children. I'm working, I work with um, a child that's, that's dealing with that and it's so gratifying to see the, the weight coming off of his shoulders because for children, they hold on to that so tightly, any kind of trauma, and you can see it in them. You can see they're almost shrouded by darkness and allowing their minds to open it. And children are so receptive to hypnosis because they don't have that voice saying, should I believe this? I don't know, is this working? You know, they're just like, this is great, this is cool, you know? And usually children really do see those like movies and they're mine. So they have a really great time and it really helps to unlock all of that negativity that can come from, from any kind of trauma. And especially with children, you know, it can be traumatic to go into the lunchroom and nobody wants to sit with you. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be something violent. It can be, you know, these little experiences from life that, that really sit deeply in them. And often hypno babies are really receptive to hypnobirthing. Even after their, the, their birth, if you just play one of the relaxation CDs, they can kind of nod off. So. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. I mean, I really can't think of anything that you couldn't use hypnotherapy for. I mean, of course, like if somebody has cancer or a very real you know, medical issue, we only work with the referral of doctors to make sure that they're also getting the proper medical treatment that they need. But yeah, it's a wonderful compliment to anything. The classes are so beneficial because the partner, you know, accompanies the mom, and so he learns all the tools, and he travels with her through all the hypnosis, all the different techniques, so they're really in tune with each other going into it, and I give um, each dad what I call the birth companion cheat sheet, <laughs> and it's one page that is like, okay, here's what you do in this situation, and not even by 
different situations, but different techniques that he can utilize. You know, reminders about the light touch massage. You know, if mom really feels like being touched, using that, uh, different pressure points. I have little scripts that he can use because sometimes his voice is really powerful. Some moms just want to hear their partner talk in a really lulling voice the whole time. Um, sometimes the mom just wants dad to sit there and be silent and hold her hand or get her water. But the most important thing that the dad can do is really learn to tap into his intuition and get in sync with mom. And then you can almost feel what the mom needs before she even knows it. You know, suggesting different positions and helping her to move into a position if she seems like she's just getting kind of comfortable, you know, asking, I sense that you're kind of slipping out of that state of relaxation. You know, what, what do you feel like you need right now? And, and helping to guide her to figure out what she needs. And, and just also being open to being present. Because sometimes there's nothing that can be done. You know, sometimes mom just needs to move through a surge on her own. Or if, she, if baby is emerging and she's really feeling a lot of powerful sensations, sometimes she just needs dad to hold her hand and say, you're beautiful, you're doing great. And it's hard, you know, for some birth companions to see their, their wife, their partner going through such a transformation, you know, and to not like do something, you know, to get in there and be hands on when sometimes that's not what mom wants. So really knowing that just by being there and being calm yourself and giving mom a lot of love, that's enough. This is wonderful. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here, every one of you. And if you have any questions after, ask me and um, yeah. Again, I feel very, very blessed to have shared this past hour with you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.